All right, you guys, so I'm gonna go over our lesson 11.2 from our Pearson website. Remember, you can choose to do the website or you can choose to do the worksheets that I sent home for your students during this time. So our solve and share today is about, um, again, noticing the patterns. And today in our 100 chart, we are stopping at the number 50. So you're gonna want your kiddo to read the numbers all the way to 50 and count. Make sure that they're pointing to each number as they read. Okay, and then um, we're gonna look at some numbers on the charts and try to figure out why those numbers are underlined. So for example, here, if we go down this column, or no, in this row, we see that there are no numbers underlined until the very end. So we notice in the number 10, a two-digit number, the number one is num um, underlined. In this row, all of the first numbers are underlined. Okay, in the second row, all of the first numbers are underlined. In the third row, same thing. So we want kids to recognize that the first digit is underlined in the tens place, um, is what we would call that spot. And we want them to recognize that that number is underlined as it's trying to point out the tens digit. So today they are going to be um, figuring out which numbers are missing in the chart and they should be circling the number that would fit with the pattern in that row. So if we're doing our 20s here, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, they should have the two circled um, as well to show that the two is in the tens place. Okay, and we also would wanna talk about how in each row, the number that um, is underlined changes. So here it's the one, here it's the two, here is a three, here is a four. Okay, and so you can have a conversation about, again, place value and how this represents 10, 20, 30, and 40. Okay, um, after you guys finish that solve and share, I'm gonna play this video for you guys to go through today, the visual learning, because remember that visual learning video um, highlights those three boxes. Patterns can help you find missing numbers. What can you see in the picture? There is a number chart. Five red counters are covering some numbers on the chart. Are the covered numbers in a row or a column? Remember, columns go up and down. They are in a column. How can you work out which numbers are missing? You can look at the numbers before and after the missing number. Okay, so then this is where the kiddo could do the try it. Remember, you have access to these videos. For this lesson, I'm not going to do the try it. I'm going to let the video continue. The missing numbers are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So at this point, you could have your kiddo recognize that, again, these numbers are in order. So it starts with 9, missing number was 10, and 11. So the pattern has to be following um, the correct number order. How many numbers have been covered on this chart? Five numbers are covered. Are the missing numbers in a row or a column? Remember a row goes side to side or left to right or horizontal. They are in a row. Which number is just before the missing numbers? Okay, so we want the kiddos to be able to recognize what number is before the missing number, so they need to know how to um, recognize and know use that word before. 33 is just before them. Which number is just after the missing numbers? So again, we need to know that vocabulary of after. You have them point to the number after the last yellow counter. 39 is just after them. What is one way you could work out which numbers are missing? Look for a pattern to help you find missing numbers. You could look at the tens in that row and the ones in each column. You can count on to find the missing numbers. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So I think this way is um, your more kindergarten way of solving this problem, knowing that when we count, we count in order. So you're going to have kiddos who need to go 31, 32, 33. They're actually going to need to touch and count each box. Then you're going to have some kiddos recognize, well, the three was in the tens place, so I need to keep the three in the tens place all the way through this row. 
They're also going to have kiddos who recognize that as the ones place changes, it goes up by one, one, two, three. So they're going to recognize that pattern. This is going to be four, five, six. Okay. So it doesn't really matter which place they're at. Again, one is a little bit more advanced than the other, but either way is okay. Okay. That's the end of that video. He's just going to come out and tell them what they did. So we're going to go back into our interactive edition here. So as this is loading, remember that those three boxes at the top of the page just really re review and cover that video. So again, if you want to have a conversation with your kiddo about that, it's just the video on paper. Okay. So again, our directions are down here at the bottom. They need to count aloud the numbers in this top row right here, and then count all of the numbers in the middle row out loud and draw a circle around the part that is the same. So we're trying to recognize that in this row, the threes are circled. They should be able to recognize that in this row, the fours were missing and that's why they drew those in. So really recognizing the tens place and how it stays the same within the row until the last number, those decade numbers change. Okay, so in our work today, students are going to be finding the missing number in each row. So for problem three, they need to know what's missing here and here. And then they are going to be in problem four, that's what this is for right here. They're going to find the, um, the boxes of the numbers that have a two in the tens place. So they're gonna need a crayon and they need to find the tens place. And again, the tens place is that first digit. They're looking for a two. So I would go through and ask them, how many digits are in this row? Well, there's only one here, okay? How about in this row? Well, these have two. Okay, what number is the first number? Well, it's a one. We're looking for a two for the first number, for that tens place. So students here then would go down to the next row. Okay, how many digits is this number? Or do, are there in each number here? There's two digits. What number is the first number? It's a two. Is the two showing us the tens place? Yes. So this is the row that we would want them to color. So they'll get their crayon and they'll color in this row right here. Okay, they stop here because again, that does not, 30 does not have a two in the tens place. Okay, number five says find and mark an X on these numbers, 32 and 44. So you're gonna need to read that to them. They need to put an X on 32 and 34. Okay. And then um, the next part says have students complete the numbers in the green column. Oh, I'm sorry. I said 44. I messed that up. So let me erase that and go to 44. A four and a four. You can ask the kiddos too. How do I make a 44? A four and a four. Okay. Have students complete the numbers in the green column. Explain the pattern that they see in the tens place and then write the number that is always the same in that column. So in this example right here, we're working right here in this green row, and we want them to be able to recognize, does that mean six? Let's see here. Uh, yep. Okay. So we want them to be able to recognize that a number is missing in the tens place. We want them to be able to tell which number it is. So this is where it gets interesting to see where your kiddo's at developmentally. Some kiddos will need to count to figure out that number. Some kiddos will just look at what comes before and what comes after to figure out that number. That's where you want your student to be. So here they should be able to say, okay, 17, 18, 19. If your kiddo is counting, try to get them to recognize before and after. Some kiddos are gonna be even more advanced and they're gonna realize that as we move down in these columns right here, okay, it's increasing by 10 each time. So eight moves to 18, moves to a 28, moves to 38, moves to 48. Okay, so this is the most advanced way of knowing the patterns of the 100 chart. You're gonna see kiddos do it in any different way and it's all of those are okay. Okay, last part down here says to recognize the number that is always the same in that column. So if we look at the column, we need to circle the number that's the same. Well, that has an eight, this has an eight, this has an eight. So we're gonna circle those all the way down and they need to write their eight right here. Okay, on number seven, they're looking for the have students find the blue boxes on the chart and then circle the set of numbers that shows the missing numbers. So here you're going to want to say, okay, does this set of numbers go in here? So 34, would we write 34 again? No. So you can have them count again. We'll see where kiddos are at. There are some kiddos will just count the whole row and find the missing numbers. Some kiddos will be able to just count before and after, and some kiddos will just see the pattern. So right here, they should have this one circled in there and you can have them write their numbers in here as well. Okay. 
So the next part of the lesson is very similar. Again, you're going to be practicing with the 100 chart going to 50. So make sure you follow these instructions right here. And um, if you have any questions, you guys can let me know. All right. Hope this helped. Thanks so much.